I hope you're having a great day. <clears throat> well, as we know, cardiovascular problems, heart attacks, death from cardiac arrests is a problem around the world. And when it comes to India, we lead, we almost lead the world in a number of statistics when it comes to death caused by cardiovascular problems. So what we've been noticing over the last couple of months and years are certain commonalities that we see in people who suffer from heart problems. Now, heart problems can be a very vast subject. It could be cardiac arrest, there could be heart attacks, there could be strokes, there could be extreme high blood pressure, which leads to strokes and heart attacks. But when we look at the commonalities of people who have heart disease, these are the commonalities that we want to share to you, share with you today. Because there may be some of you who are going through heart disease right now, but at the same time, when you understand the commonalities, you can use them to even prevent the onset of heart disease. Because now we live in a world today which is very reactive. We, we keep on reacting to everything that happens in life. There's a disease, we wait for it to happen, and then we react to it. All our investment in energy and time should go into prevention. Rather than having the disease, there should be several things and lifestyle changes that we're making every single day to prevent the onset of disease. So number one, when it comes to the heart, what we need to understand, we've got to break the myth that it's all about cholesterol. For the longest time, we've been fooled that cholesterol causes heart attacks, that bad cholesterol causes cardiac arrests. Yes, it's not a good thing to have too much of bad cholesterol in the body. It's not a good thing. But by looking at cholesterol alone, we fail to look at other factors that are the leading contributors to heart attacks and heart disease. That is inflammation. Inflammation is the root cause of most heart attacks and most cardiac arrests. In fact, when you look at statistics of the autopsies of people who have gone through heart attacks and died, very few of them had bad lipid profiles. Very few of them had blockages which were caused by high cholesterol. Most of them are caused by inflammation. <clears throat> so when we get to the root cause of trying to solve a problem, because we're about tired of living in a world where we're only treating the symptoms, we're, we're so good at giving people medicine, we're so good at telling people go through all these tests and you know we're good at telling you what the problem is, but no one's focusing on the root cause and why you're sick or why you have high blood pressure or why you have diabetes or why you have cholesterol forming in your arteries. When we find out the root cause, then we can address the root cause, make lifestyle changes, take medication if we have to as a crutch, but as we make lifestyle changes and reduce those root causes, we basically take care of the disease. It's as simple as that. So yes, the number one thing is sleep. We have to understand that sleep deprivation is linked to inflammation, not just in your cells, not just in your brain, but even in your heart. All of us have heard of extremely fit people, marathon runners who suddenly die of a heart attack. They die in their sleep, they don't wake up the next morning, they die while they're training. And when you go into their diets, their diets are perfect. You go into their exercise, their exercise is perfect. But what we fail to look at is how many hours of sleep are they getting? We have to understand that today, with the advancement in technology, with the amount of com competition in the world, with the increased amount of ambition, variety all around us, and all this peer pressure to be a particular way in society, we've compromised sleep. The main thing, the main ingredient for good health is what we have compromised. And we're compromising sleep in our growing children as well, just so that we can fit in a couple of extracurricular classes, then we send them for parties, they come home late at night, and then you know, we compromise their sleep or we're waking them too early in the morning because they have classes even before school starts. So we're compromising the basic, the basic requirement, the basic need of the human body and mind and trillions of cells, which is sleep. No amount of technology, no amount of money in your bank account, no amount of insurance that you have, no amount of nutrition will save you if you have less sleep, period because the magic of the body happens while you sleep. Recovery, healing, the balance of your hormones, the reduction of inflammation, the balance of inflammation and inflammatory markers happens while you sleep. Today, medical science is also linking causes of cancer and diabetes and cardiovascular with one thing, sleep deprivation and poor quality sleep. So when we know this, this is something that comes to us inexpensive and free. You know, we spend money on so many other things, but the basic things that we need for good health are always free. They're inexpensive and free. But we've, we have this mentality today that if we don't pay for it, if it's not tangible, it's not useful. 
So number one, the number one commonality that we see in all of our heart patients, all of our bypass patients, and even a lot of our patients that have passed on because of cardiac arrest and heart attack is lack of sleep. They had chronic lack of sleep over the years, over the months, over the weeks, either poor quality or very less sleep or basically completely disturbed sleep cycles. So the first thing that you want to look at is the health of your sleep. No amount of baby aspirin, no amount of curcumin, no amount of heart friendly foods is going to save your heart if you don't have the right amount of sleep. The second, a sedentary lifestyle. There are so many people out there with heart disease who are on statins and they're on statins. It's making their medical parameters look pretty in order. So they believe that they're healthy and they don't have to make lifestyle changes. So they continue being sedentary. Now it's common sense. We need to have common sense because a lot of people taking statins are educated people. Okay, and yet they don't understand that being sedentary is one of the root causes of their heart problems. And just because you're on a statin and your lipid profile looks healthy, it doesn't mean you're healthy. You are still sick because you need a statin to suppress your symptom. You are still sick. So what you want to do is make lifestyle changes. Like if you're sedentary, you don't have blood circulation. Yes, your heart is constantly circulating blood. Now you think of your arteries as little pipes. These pipes keep on getting clogged. As we push blood through these little pipes, it's like a pipe. You have mud in a pipe and you flush water through the pipe, you loosen the mud and the mud flows out. That's how the human body is designed to work. But we start accumulating plaque and cholesterol and then we have blockages and then we think a bypass is gonna change our life. But I know so many people who have stents and bypasses who have to have more stents put into their heart and more bypass operations later. So did the first bypass fix them? Did the first stent fix them? Absolutely not. It suppressed a symptom. They were never told to change their lifestyle and that's why they have the reoccurrence of a problem. You need to move your body. You need to exercise. We have so much more today in terms of comfort and yet we have so much of discomfort. Just because we have drivers, we have comfortable chairs in our offices, we have comfortable beds and sofas and in our houses and homes, it doesn't mean we have to be lazy. It doesn't mean that we need to sit all day. Sitting is the biggest sickness that anyone can ever have. And only by changing the time that the amount of time that you sit in a day and you start converting that sitting time into movement. It doesn't have to be a one hour workout in the gym. It could just be something as simple as walking. That is going to change the health of your heart. Because if you think that drug is going to save your life, well, let me tell you right now, it is not. And number two, it's suppressing your symptom. Number three, it comes with numerous dangerous side effects, which you're free to Google. Every side effect of a statin and how it impacts you, not just your liver, your blood pressure, your brain, your muscles and everything else. So I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm saying that in hope that it will motivate you to make a change in your lifestyle and start moving from sedentary to active. The more you move, the more your heart works. Your heart is like a muscle. What makes a muscle strong? Activity and use. What you don't use, you lose. So if you're not active, your heart starts getting weaker and weaker. If your heart's not able to pump blood and circulate it through in your entire body, you will have heart problems. Number three, the commonality amongst people who have heart problems is chronic stress. People who are constantly angry, irritable, they shout. This doesn't mean it's an emotion that everyone has, but some people have no control over that. They're constantly irritable. They're constantly grumbling and complaining and shouting at people and putting people down. They can't control their own emotions because they've been consumed by life and they've been consumed by their own emotions. It's okay to get angry. It's a human nature. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad, all of that, but we got to learn how to tame that emotion. Every time you shout and every time you get stressed, your cortisol levels go up, your BP goes up, everything in your body changes. It all changes. The biochemistry of your body, your cells, your heart, everything changes, which is why it's so simple. It's such a simple test for people with high blood pressure right now. If you have high blood pressure and you sit down right now and you take a couple of deep breaths, that brings your cortisol levels down, lowers your BP, and you check your blood pressure levels after maybe a round of six cycles of deep breathing, you'll find that your blood pressures come down even faster than your medication works. What does that tell you? That you are still in control of your BP in terms of the way you behave, the way you react to situations, your temper, your anger, and your emotions. That is in your control. No medication in the world can ever fix that problem for you, which means it puts responsibility and accountability on you to fix that problem for yourself using lifestyle. 
So when we see people with chronic stress, see a little bit of stress here and there is not gonna cause a problem, otherwise everyone would have heart attacks because everyone's stressed. I'm talking about chronic stress, I'm talking about chronic anger, chronic emotions. People who constantly internalize emotions, they keep it in, keep it in, let it build up and then finally, they vent it out in anger, like a pressure cooker exploding when the pressure builds up too much, or it happens in the, heart, in, in, in the form of high blood pressure, a heart attack, a cardiac arrest, a stroke, all of that stuff. There is a definite connection between human emotion, heart disease, and any disease that's happening in your body. There is a connect, and we need to understand that. So stress, chronic stress is the third, is the third commonality that we see, and it's a vicious cycle. If you're stressed, you can't sleep at night. If you can't sleep at night, you have more inflammation. So you build this vicious cycle. Because you're tired in the morning, you don't work out. So now three commonalities, that sleep, exercise, and your stress levels puts you in this vicious trap. And the only person who can break it is you. The fourth, the fourth thing, diabetes. People who have diabetes and high blood pressure, you need to understand the seriousness of your condition and you need to be motivated to start making a change right away. You need to understand that this is a deadly cocktail for heart attacks, cardiac arrest, strokes, and heart problems. Diabetes and high blood pressure together. Unfortunately, it's a vicious cycle again. People with diabetes, they don't look after their sugar levels. They're all dependent on that medication, thinking that as long as my blood sugar levels are under control because the meds have kept it that way, I'm healthy. You are not healthy. If you are type 2 diabetic, you have the ability to reverse your diabetes. Type 1, maybe not. Type 2, definitely. And that takes you responsibility, discipline, and lifestyle to make that change. Let me explain what happens in a diabetic. You have uncontrolled blood sugar levels. Your blood sugar levels go up. It starts damaging your arteries in your blood system. It starts making them hard, making them rigid, allowing fatty acids to accumulate in these little dents, which are their damaged arteries caused by your constant fluctuation in your blood sugar levels. And now that little pipe, think of that little pipe as your artery. Okay, this is damaged, it's getting harder and harder, and you have fatty acids that are accumulating, decreasing the size of your artery. So what used to send this much of blood through, now you have this much of space to send blood through. So what happens, your blood pressure automatically goes up because now your heart needs to squeeze blood through this much of a perimeter compared to what the original size was. And your blood pressure goes right up and now you have a cocktail for disaster, which is heart problems. So diabetes and high blood pressure together, you need to understand, you may be on the best medication, but if you are not changing your lifestyle, you are going to suffer from the side effects of this, and it is usually heart attacks, and usually heart disease, and that's what we see. Most of our heart disease patients have high blood pressure and diabetes, or they have diabetes and the onset of high blood pressure. If you are diabetic, and you have high blood pressure, and you are smoking, it's common sense for you to understand that you need to stop smoking right now. I don't know how difficult it's gonna go be for you, but take help if you, if you need it, but you need to understand that smoking is also making those arteries hard and rigid and causing damage to the insides of your arterial walls. So now you have that being caused by two things, your diabetes, high blood pressure, and your smoking, which makes it a complete recipe for heart disease. When it comes to nutrition and supplements, you'll notice that the commonalities that I spoke about was diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep, a sedentary lifestyle, and stress. I've not spoken about nutrition, because believe me, nutrition plays a very, very small role. Yes, I have people who eat deep fried food at home. They eat fried snacks at home, and they have clean lipid profiles, zero heart disease. Nutrition plays an important role, but a small role compared to what sleep does, your activity and exercise, your stress, and a current condition like diabetes or high blood pressure that you may have. When it comes to a diet, we gotta keep it clean. We need to understand if you're a candidate right now for a bypass patient and you're non-vegetarian and you have blockages, one of the simplest ways and the most natural ways to reduce those blockages is immediately convert from non-vegetarian to vegetarian for a while. I'm not saying you need to do it for a lifetime, for a while because you wanna reduce inflammation. The endothelial cells in your arteries are inflamed. And when you reduce inflammation by eating less inflammatory foods, you automatically reduce the inflammation in these endothelial cells and you can actually break down these blockages naturally. 
There are so many people out there who are already doing it. By saying this, I'm not saying it's a replacement for your doctor, your cardiologist, or any surgeries or medicines that you're on, but I am here to tell you it is possible, and there are hundreds of people who are breaking down 95, 96% blockages, bringing it down to 70%, 60%, 50% which the human body can ride on perfectly well without any risk by just changing their diet moving from inflammatory to non-inflammatory it's as simple as that so yes nutrition plays a very small role and then people are popping in supplements like curcu curcumin and CoQ10 and all of these supplements thinking hey it's gonna take care of my heart it's only supporting it. It's not taking care of your heart. What takes care of your heart is your own body and your own cells. And what takes care of your cells and your own body and your own cells is the amount of sleep and rest that you give your body, the amount of activity that you give your body. So you help your heart to pump out blood to all your trillions, trillion cells in the body. So I'm gonna recap the commonalities that we see. So if you have any of these commonalities, this is what you wanna be working on right now. Sleep, quality sleep. A sedentary lifestyle, you want to convert that into an active lifestyle. It could just mean walking. It doesn't mean you have to join a gym. It could just mean moving from your couch, getting your shoes on and walking, not sitting in one place for too long. Number three, stress. I know the common excuse is, oh, we all have stress. Yes, we all have stress. We do, but it's how you handle that stress. It's how you react to that stress. It's what you can accept, what you can let go of. It's finally your choice. You can't blame your boss. You can't join, play, uh, blame your job or how much you take on. That's your choice. If you've ended up being in a stressful environment, it is your choice. No one's forced you to be there. You still have the choice, which comes with a consequence that you're responsible for. But you have that choice. It's just that you're not making it. So when we look at these commonalities, the fourth is diabetes with high blood pressure. If you are type 2 diabetic, you want to do everything that you can to reduce it. Because if you're sitting over there and saying, oh, my doctor said I have to be on a medicine for a lifetime, lifetime, it's not reversible, let me tell you right now, you are wrong. You can choose to have that mindset and belief, and you can choose to suffer from the side effects of that. But right now, as we speak, we have thousands, if not thousands, hundreds of thousands of people around the world who have reversed their type 2 diabetes. If they can do it, so can you. A very small population of people will struggle to do this because they have other complications. I'm talking about everyone else who is moving away from making lifestyle changes and depending only on allopathic medication. There is nothing wrong with allopathic medication. Take it if you need it, but you have to make lifestyle changes along with the medication you take. Otherwise, that medication is gonna cause side effects and eventually gonna make your health far worse. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right and breathe deep.